Hey, Shovelhead Feds here, out in the Shovelhead Shed. And today, I am working on this bike here. Uh, actually, just took the carburetor off of it. It is a SNS Super E Shorty. Um, it's a pre-2004, uh, pre uh, and how I know that it's a pre-2004 is because if after 2004, Right here, there was a, uh, a jet. After 2004, they started putting a jet in there. Um, so that one doesn't have the jet, doesn't, ha doesn't have the screw for it, the, uh, the, the threads for it, so that tells me it's pre-2004. I took this carburetor apart, I cleaned it up, um, made sure everything was serviceable, everything was working, and all the other stuff. Why, if you ask me, why didn't I show me taking it apart? It's because anybody knows how to take something apart. Pretty friggin' easy, okay? Putting it back together, that's a whole nother thing. Now, what I found with SNS carburetors at, is that first, in any carburetor, man, it, it's a daunting task. When you look at it, you see all these uh, screws and, 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 and little bearings, little valves, little BB looking things, and little seals, and oh my God, where does this go, and everything else. A long, long time ago, what I did was I took an SNS carburetor apart and I laid all the parts out. And then I took it apart again. You know, I put it together, took it all, took it apart again, put it together. I just take it apart. So now, basically, with my eyes closed, I know how to put it back together. So this video here, it will show you how to put it back together. It's in no certain way. Um, I just put it back together. Some people like to start on the bottom part. Some people like to start with the um, accelerator and stuff like that. It's just a hey, whatever parts in my hand, that's what I put back together. So anyway, let me set the camera up and uh, I will start putting it back together. And hopefully I have this thing running. And to be honest with you, man, it takes like maybe 15 minutes to put it back together. Um, I do soak it uh, when I take it apart I do soak it do clean it. I hand clean everything uh, one of the best things I have found is because I do play the guitar and I take I save the strings I don't know if you can see that or not I save the strings for my guitar and uh, they work the best that I've ever seen to use probe little holes little orifices and stuff like that on carburetors uh, works good for me Seems like they're the, just basically the perfect size if I need something cleaned out. So anyway, let me set the camera up and we'll be right back. All right, let's get putting it back together. Um, you know, to be honest with you, um, sometimes, sometimes I don't know the names to all the, the I, this thingamajigger and all that other stuff. To me, it's not important. It's important to know what they do. I really don't care about the names. Anyway, like I said, it's in no particular order how I put it, put it together. Um, some people say that, that it has to go in order a certain way. I just say, hey man, let's just get it back together. Uh, one of the things that you want to make sure is that this is nice and clean and you really shouldn't let it snap like that. But uh, that's your enrichener, as they call it. Um, this was real nice and dirty. Now it's all nice and clean. Um, one of the things that I found is that if you use a half, I mean a 7 16 wrench, uh, really helps opening it up. This is this right here. It's so tough on the fingers, man. But uh, I just use a 7 16 wrench and make sure it's all clean. Um, normally, I'll take out this jet, but I didn't need to, and I didn't want to. I, I want to be able to uh, pretty much get this thing going. I didn't want to have to waste time. I've checked all these little orifices down here with my guitar string. Everything is perfect. I use a, uh, somewhere I got it, right here. Uh, this is actually uh, for gun bores, but I find that if you, really helps you to see, there you go. Helps you to see if it's clean down there. Uh, Harbor Freight, a couple bucks, no big deal. It's from China. Like I said, I have undid 
I have done and undone so many times that I can do this with my eyes closed. You want to torque that just, just tight enough. Um, you know, look, this goes here. This doesn't go there. This won't go there. This won't go there. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's, it, it, it's pretty easy. Um, a lot of people are nervous and scared about carburetors and man once you once you do it once or twice it's like oh please man and then you look like a total genius around people um because everybody is so baffled there again just tight 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 doesn't have to be killer tight um <sighs> uh, there's a couple things that that you have to know where what goes where and I'll show you that in a second um, I think that's that's a 5 8 what isn't that embarrassing hang on now one of the mistakes that I almost made is I want to make sure that's supposed to have a washer on it, a nylon washer, and there it is. It's uh, actually a seal. Make sure it's fit. It's on there right. Sits on there right. Now I've I've, I've rebuilt this without a kit because everything is everything is serviceable. Everything was workable. Everything looked good. Um, this make sure you have your seal slash washer this is uh, your um, this is where your, your float going to sit down in there it's going to close that off this is aluminum you want to tighten it down but don't kill it because You'll just strip it out. Everything, everything, everything. It's got to go the right way. And everything. Look, if it don't fit in the hole, don't belong there. Tighten it down. Everything's looking good. The uh, let me show you how to do the the float. All right, the float super easy. You want to take your pin, put your pin through there. It's a little brass pin. Hey, sometimes they fall. Get your little valve. That's not the valve. That's the valve. Make sure this is all clean and not biffed up. This goes on right there. Attaches like that. Goes down in that little hole. Then it sits down. There's actually a groove right here and right there that that rod sits down in. And what happens is when this lifts up, this pushes down. The the fuel because this is buoyant is, is buoyancy has buoyancy like a life preserver. The fuel lifts it up as the fuel lifts it up. It it pushes this down and it shuts the the fuel off. So if it's if you have water, I mean, if you, water, if you have gas running out of your carb, the chances are the reason why the gas is running out of your carb is because either A, that the problem is going to be here in your float. It's either sticking there, it's sticking here. Um, it, it's a real simple fix. Just tighten this down. I'm going to slide that over just a little bit. I'm hoping you can see all this on camera because I don't know what you can see and what you can't see. Maybe just tighten it down. Tight enough, and then that's it. Let's see. It's got good travel. 
So there you go. The, uh, the next thing, this is the hard part. If it's a hard part, let me make sure. Okay. Because this is really important. Let me move this camera. Because this is what they don't show you. On, on, on almost every... All right, you have a hole here and a hole here. This hole, a screw goes into. That screw right there. This hole, first thing you do, you have this little tiny baby spring, little tiny baby spring, it goes in right there. Second thing, this helps for me, is you have this little tiny, it's a little check valve, little bearing, little ball bearing, can you see it? It goes on top of that spring, except I just dropped it, and I just pulled the spring out. It goes there, spring goes in, how about if I do it this way? Spring goes into this first hole, or the back hole. Then you wanna put this little tiny bearing on top of that spring. Uh, unfortunately, these are magnetized. Anyway, it's on that little spring. I'm gonna take the other one. You just wanna drop it right there in that hole. All right. Now, this is the fun part, the hard part, the easy part. Right here, there's a groove. And on this diaphragm, there's a groove, a little, little, little brim right there. That brim fits into this, that groove, right? So that spring goes there. This goes down there, fits into that groove, push it in that groove, make sure it's kind of in that groove because that's really groovy. It's, it's, you know, it's under pressure because there's a spring there. But you want to make sure it's all pressed down. This is the fun part. Is you have to slide it down there. And hope that everything stayed and didn't move around. All right, take two. Hey, Pain in the butt. This screw goes right here, except it's a long screw. That is a screw that you put together. There'll be two small screws. One goes right here. It's the smallest of the screws in this carburetor. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord. I almost screwed up. All right, very, very important. That seal goes right there. It's a, it's a basically a gasket, a seal. They go in there. Now, anybody that knows what they're doing was probably just screaming at me because I really screwed it up. But caught myself, so it didn't count. We'll make sure that this is in there. Make sure that's seated in there. It looks good. This goes right down on top of there. Now. This screw goes here. And one of the good things about when you start messing with these carburetors, you want to put all your parts out and you want to look at all your parts. And so how I knew that I screwed up is because there's a part in there and I know where every part goes. And so when I seen that, it was simple. Oops, forgot that. All right. You don't want to tighten this up too tight right away because you don't want to you want everything to get an even seal you're dealing with aluminum you don't want nothing to crack all 
There you go. See, it? that's where your accelerator pump goes, pushes. Now, that part that I just had, this part. This part, this part goes in here into this rubber boot. Push it down that rubber boot. Just kind of put it like that. This is one of the most important things. Very, very important. I know so many people screw up. This little ring right here, that little tiny seal has to go on top where your uh, ejector nozzle is that's what when you when you accelerate that's what sprays the fuel okay that's on that looks good everything looks good i've got three screws left so i know i got all my parts on there everything was tight and all you just gotta do is now put it back together in order to put it before you put it back together you have this gasket this is a new gasket, it's good. It's, I'm reusing it but, it, but it's good. It goes this way. I wanna check one thing. I wanna make sure that that gasket's there. There you go. Now you have four bolts. Four screws. One, two, three, and then that long one, the long one. Four. Now, I wasn't timing it, but how long did that take? And I could have did it way faster if I wasn't showing and going back. But it really takes like 10 minutes to redo these. You know, I mean, not very long. You know, a half an hour, you know, an hour at the very most, if you include the time it took you to take it off, put it back on. Um, this, is, this isn't rocket surgery. Um, I mean, let's face it. Even a biker can do this. I'm gonna go make sure everything is tight. Guten Tat, as they say in Germany. You don't want to over torque it. I'm not, I'm not bearing down. You know, after a while, you kind of get the feel of how tight. Um, when you realize that when you're tightening something, you're stretching the threads, and you know you know by hand exactly how tight it needs to be, and how far you're stretching the threads. This is five eighths. That's a nine sixteenths. What do I do with my five eighths? Oh, the snapper roll. Oh, the, oh. I forgot I dropped it. I just want to double check. That's good, that's good, and it's ready to go on the motorcycle. Make sure that this seal is good, and this seal is good. All right, see it on the motorcycle.
I still have to, you know, adjust some things, you know, and uh, that's it. Get it up to temperature and, and uh, set, set a couple of things on the carburetor, but it's good to go, man. Yeah, buddy. Damn rooster. But anyway, yeah, I, I got to set, set a few things on it. I got to set the carburetor up. Um, I'll put the, uh, put the breather on it and stuff like that and uh, take it out for a little spin and, and uh, should be. Should be good to go. All right. Peace.